sound speeds. And no, this title is not clickbait, so stay with me for a few minutes. It'll all make sense once you hear my story. Well, technically, you're going to hear a few stories, and I'm not the guy telling them. Remember Ray A. Rayburn? He is the audio engineer and microphone measurement expert that spoke with us regarding how microphone manufacturers create a data sheet full of microphone specifications. Well, after the interview was done, he went on to tell some stories, and they were too interesting to pass up. So without further delay, here they are. One of the uh, the things I have down at the bottom of my technical page is um, uh, I used to work for uh, RCA Records in uh, New York City, and uh, uh, RCA closed uh, their... Uh, uh, they used to have studios all over the country and around the world, and they closed many of them. And uh, so they, when they closed the uh, uh, studio in Hollywood, uh, they sold some gear, they threw some stuff out, and then they sent some of the stuff to the studios in New York. Uh, and one of the things that they, they sent uh, was the master reference book for disc recording, which was issued in February 1940 by the recording department of RCA Manufacturing. Oh, yeah. And basically, this was the guidebook for all of their studios worldwide. There were only 15 copies of the book ever made. Wow. And it has full manuals on all of the microphones, the loudspeakers, the custom-made mixing consoles, the Scully disc cutting lathes, all of this. They had full pictures wow. and manuals on all of this equipment, including uh, uh, big fold-out uh, blueprints of the wiring of the consoles and, and, and so on. And uh, Gosh, so, That's got to be neat to look at. Yeah. And, and so when... Uh, when the powers that be in uh, uh, RCA in New York decided to throw this book out, I grabbed it out of the oh, trash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then uh, uh, years later, uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Doug Jones, uh, managed to uh, get this whole thing turned into a PDF, and uh, including all the, the – including the big – uh, blueprints, and uh, then uh, as as he originally sent it to me, it was an absolutely monstrous file. And then I I went through it with the the PDF software and where it was able to reduce the file size without reducing the the, the image quality noticeably. And so now it's this 386 page book, and it's now down to 46.7 megabytes. Still, that's and. That's a heck of a size, though, still. But yeah. for all the information. And, and so I have that on the bottom of my uh, technical page. You can download that book. Wow. And uh, 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 see. I'll have to check you know, that out. What, what, what was the state of the art of, uh, of recording equipment in 1940? In 1940. <laughs> Before World War II really even got started. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and of course, this was uh, all recording direct to lacquer you know because mm -hmm. tape tape recorders you know uh you know yep. had, had uh, were actually invented by the germans during world war ii and uh, uh oh which is, is sort of an interesting little little tidbit uh during world war ii obviously the allies really really wanted to kill hitler oh yeah and so they would hear hitler giving a speech over a radio station and say that quality is so great he's got to be live this is not a, they're not playing a record oh and they would bomb the radio stations trying to kill hitler and oh, it, wow. they never got him because it was a neumann condenser mic feeding uh feeding a magnetophone a uh, tape recorder, which is the the first tape recorder in the world. Wow! And the and the sound quality was so good that we thought it had to be live. And that's something you will <laughs> never see in a history book either. Yeah, that is awesome. And, 
And, and, and so we, we kept on trying to kill Hitler by bombing radio stations. Well, they were playing records, basically. Yeah, they were playing, playing uh, tape recordings that is uh, awesome. of, 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 his, uh, of his speeches. Oh, that is amazing. Oh, that's and, awesome. And uh, then, uh, of, of course, uh, uh, after uh, uh, the, uh, the, at the end of World War II, um uh the uh, one one of our soldiers uh had uh, managed to grab a hold of one of these magnetophone tape recorders and uh took it back to the United States and basically that became Ampex oh yes wow and uh another one of our soldiers managed to grab some bags of the oxide powder that they were coating on the paper uh, because it's paper tape right uh to make the magnetic recording tape and uh uh that was a mr Orr, and uh uh so his his company is now what you know was scotch recording tape wow that is really cool and, and so you had you had that that's where the uh, magnetic recording industry uh, came from in the U.S. It's it's some soldiers stealing the German stuff <laughs> and copying it when they got back. <laughs> All the better reason not to be a draft dodger because you could launch your entire career based on information you steal from your enemies. That is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today, everybody, of course, knows about the Internet. But uh, do you know that that came out of an acoustic company? Based out of uh, uh, Massachusetts, uh, there there were uh, two, and then later a third uh, professor from uh, 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 I believe MIT that uh, started uh, uh, an acoustics uh, consulting business uh, on on the on the side, and. Uh, uh, did all sorts of stuff. A lot of it for uh, for the uh, uh, the uh, U.S. government, and uh, so uh, uh, anyway, um, they they were sort of a th became a think tank for everything to do with acoustics, and uh, somebody told them, "Hey, this this one professor is going to become available. Why don't you you get him?" and he they went and talked with him, and they found out. Well, yeah, he was doing stuff with uh, computers in the this is very early days, obviously. And uh, uh, you know, it was like, well, you know, the problem was not his salary; the problem was the cost of the computer he needed. Mm. And uh, uh, so, uh, one day he called him in and uh, and said, uh, "Hey, look at this!" And he had a whole bunch of uh, computer terminals hooked all to this one computer. Instead of having a computer and a terminal to run it, he had a whole bunch of these these terminals, and you could be doing a different job on each terminal, all on the same same computer at the same time. Hmm. And they said, "Hey, that's 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 pretty neat. Yeah, I could reduce costs of uh, of things and so on." And he says, "Yeah, but here's the real thing." You can put these terminals in different points around the world. Yes. And so they got some military uh, funding, and uh, that became DARPAnet, which was the predecessor of the internet. Bolt, Baranek, and then later Newman joined them. And uh, Bolt and Baranek, uh, uh, one of their their early jobs was designing the first sound system for the U.S. Senate chamber. And uh, I've seen the original blueprints of that because I did a much later replacement of that system. Uh, but uh, that was designed in 1948 and installed in 49. And uh, uh, that uh, anyway, later, shortly thereafter, uh, Newman joined them, and the firm became Bolperanik and Newman. And then they hired this uh, this uh, professor, and uh, that did the computer stuff. 
and that led to the basically the invention of the internet and uh, uh, to this day uh, if you look at the backbones of the internet the main one is BBN which is both Veronica and Newman gotcha. and their acoustics business which is where they started from got spun off and sold off separately as a Centec. Huh. And and because that became the tail wag that the the you know the 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 internet became the tail that wagged the dog. How'd you like that? Some pretty interesting stuff, hey. Well, down in the description, you're gonna find the links to some goodies here, so check them out. In the meantime, tune into more episodes of Sound Speeds for more interviews, fun, and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.